Are bed springs on 3D printers now obsolete? Should you remove the ones already fitted to your printer? Today we examine a range of scenarios to answer just that. For a long time now, FTM 3D printers have used compression springs to suspend the bed and provide a means of adjustment. However, more and more printers are now starting to go spring free. In this video, we'll have a look at how they work and ask the question, can printers that came with springs now go without? Let's start by asking the question, what do bed springs actually do? This here is a compression spring and these simple components have been part of 3D printers for a while now. Not all, but most 3D printers for some time now have utilized springs to suspend the print surface or bed above the printer. And the reason they're included is that they're good for adjustment. We have our 3D printer nozzle where the plastic is extruded and that should travel a straight path from one side to the other. Shown here is X, but of course our printer travels in X and Y and that means our nozzle will travel over a flat plane which we'll name the XY nozzle plane. The first job of our bed springs is to get the bed surface parallel to this XY nozzle plane. Let's say for instance that the bed is really skewed, we can adjust that side of the bed thanks in part to the springs to help get it parallel. And that's because the springs push against the bottom of the bed and the top of a leveling wheel that has a nut in it. So as we turn the wheel we can lift that corner of the bed up or down. If we adjust each corner we can get the bed parallel. The second job of the springs is to help set the correct distance between the nozzle and the bed surface. Here we're parallel but the distance is too far, so we can adjust the height equally on both sides until we get the correct clearance. Sounds pretty useful, so what are the potential spring problems that would make us consider removing them? This one's pretty simple, and that's because the bed with those springs in place has the potential to move. I'm pushing pretty hard here, but if the bed is wobbling in any way during printing, your quality will suffer. Let's start our examination of springs versus no springs, one printer at a time. Our first printer to look at is the Prusa Mark III, and for one simple reason. This was the first printer I ever owned that did away with bed leveling springs. If we examine the printer and remove the flexible magnetic sheet on top, we can see that the heater PCB is solidly mounted, with nine different mounting points compared to the usual four. And each of those mounting bolts attaches to a solid metal underframe with a solid metal spacer in between instead of a spring. So how do we level or trim the bed if there aren't any springs? For this, the Prusa relies on having a fairly square frame, but the rest comes from auto bed leveling. The Pinder probe is fitted from factory and the bed is probed in a grid before each print. So the bed being level is handled by the ABL and then the distance between the nozzle and the bed is handled with the firmware. And this approach has always worked very well for me, producing reliable first layers any time I've used this machine. Fast forward several years, this machine is a lot older and partially modified, with a different hot end and firmware, but still the original bed mounting system. According to this graph, it curls up badly in one corner, but I guess the ABL is doing its job despite the lack of bed springs, because first layers are still consistent and predictable. Next up, we have premium Core XY 3D printers. In here, I've listed two that I've built, the Ratrig V Core 3 and the Seket SK Tank, but really, multiple other printers have the same system that excludes the need for any bed springs. Both of these 3D printers have the bed mounted in three points, but there's no springs in sight. Instead, there's a channel where a spherical rigid ball rests on top, the bed held down by gravity. These kinematic beds allow the bed to move as it expands from heat to minimize any potential warping. Leveling is achieved by the bed supports, each being attached to an independent stepper motor. An ABL probe is used, but not necessarily to measure a grid over the entire surface of the bed. Instead, the probe measures the height near each of the three bed mounting points, and with those measurements, it can do a quick calculation, adjust the position of each stepper, and get the bed level and ready for printing. These premium printers typically use very thick beds, which when combined with the kinematic mounting, should keep the bed surface warp-free and flat, ensuring nice first layers without the need for any springs. Next, we have the Creality CR10 Smart, which should work just like the Prusa Mark III. I reviewed this a little while ago, and quite frankly, I was disappointed. 
Like the Prusa Mark III, the CR10 Smart has the bed rigidly mounted and then uses an auto bed leveling system to probe the top surface. In this case, using the nozzle to touch down on the bed several times in each point. This is a slow process, but is ideally done at the start of each print. Except I found that the system wasn't working and that the first layer was different on the left hand side compared to the right hand side of the bed. With no working ABL and no springs in place to adjust, I needed to solve this mechanically, which meant removing the glass bed top and then taking out each of the 16 screws that hold the bed to the platform underneath. I then used shims and ordinary washers to stack underneath the mounts in a process of trial and error to try and get the bed flat across the top. If an area seemed low, I would add a washer or remove a washer if it seemed too high. This was tedious, but eventually I got there and had a consistent first layer all across the bed. So in this case, no adjustable bed springs, no working ABL, but still a flat bed thanks to mechanical adjustments. Next up, the Creality CR10 Max, which came with bed springs, but I ended up removing them. The CR10 Max is enormous. I mean, you can fit an entire Ender 3 on the bed. That bed has some aluminium extrusion to try and keep it rigid, but even so, requires auto bed leveling to try and ensure a good first layer across such a wide area. These springs, however, I found to have far too much play and it was affecting print quality. So I picked up a TH3D solid bed mount kit. They have a lightweight aluminium sleeve surrounded by some printed ABS. You just put them underneath the bed exactly where the spring would be and then tighten up the leveling knobs to hold them in place. This proved very effective in removing the surface artifacts that came from the previously wobbly springs. You might have noticed a trend. All of the printers we've looked at so far either came without springs or have had them removed. So let's look at an example that contradicts that. Let's talk about Bamboo Lab printers, the X1 Carbon and the P1P. These two printers have been incredibly disruptive to the 3D printing market, capable of high speed, yet still retaining excellent print quality. And best of all, they remain user-friendly. Both machines have nozzle touching based auto bed leveling systems, and the X1 Carbon also has a micro LiDAR to scan the print area before it begins. On both printers, we have absolutely perfect first layers without the user needing to do anything at all, not even adjusting the Live Z offset. So how exactly is this feat accomplished? The first thing to note is that apart from the micro LiDAR, the X1 Carbon and the P1P are physically pretty much the same. Like the premium Core XY printers we looked at earlier, they both have triple Z axis lead screws, one in each front corner and one at the center rear. However, when we look underneath, we can see that they are coupled with a large belt, which means that they're synchronized and there's no auto leveling magic as we saw before. There might be three lead screws, but there's only a single Z axis stepper motor. The surprising part is that on the underside of the bed, there is a screw, a leveling knob and a stiff spring. The leveling knobs are small, difficult to hold and difficult to turn, so I suspect this is mainly for adjustment from factory. I've never touched these, but I suspect someone else has because they're visibly different in how much they're turned from left to right. Browsing the Bamboo Lab wiki confirms this, stating that the machine is correctly trimmed from factory, with these knobs only needed when something is knocked a long way out of whack. Because even if you have auto bed leveling, the less compensation it needs to apply, the better. So even the most advanced new 3D printers can still have bed springs. Let's look at one more 3D printer in detail, the Ender 3 and this time provide a before and after. The Ender 3 comes with traditional springs and leveling knobs, but I haven't used them in quite some time. And that's because I'm running auto bed leveling courtesy of a BL touch. Lately on this machine, I've had some inconsistent layer stacking. Z wobble fixes didn't help it, and we know there's a little bit of play from the springs, so let's eliminate them and see if print quality improves. Step one is to lift the gantry up high and out of the way. We can then push to compress the springs and rotate the leveling knobs until they fall off. Once all four are done, we can simply remove the bed by lifting it vertically away from the rest of the printer. In place of the springs, I'm using these simple nylon spacers. They should be tough and handle the heat without any problems. Alternatively, you could use a metal spacer as we see here, but if that's the case, I'd recommend pairing it with some sort of non-conductive washer, such as this fibrous one. The high current circuit for the heated bed is something we don't want our spacer rubbing through, shorting and starting a fire. 
even with nylon spacers, having an assortment of thin washers is going to be very handy to get things even. One corner of the bed has this wire management clip that we're going to need to work around. So I start on that corner, putting a nylon spacer where the spring would be, sliding this part into position, and then measuring how much screw thread is exposed beyond that. I then prepare the other corners with one spacer and one washer, and compare the amount of exposed thread, finding that there was about a millimetre more, therefore I grabbed a second washer, stacked it on top of the first, re-measured, and found that the result was now only 0.3 millimetres different from the original corner. I prepared the other corners with the same amount of washers, managed to invert the bed without dropping a single one, jiggled everything until the screws went through the holes beneath, ready for me to manually move the bed back and forth slowly to check clearance. For convenience, I reused the same bed leveling knobs, just applied a little bit of Loctite so they couldn't vibrate free. I then reinstalled them in each corner, doing them up fairly tight, which gives us a point of comparison. There is still some movement and I don't think you can avoid that since the bed is mounted in the center, but there's definitely less than with the springs. The next step then is to home the machine and run some auto bed leveling. Remember that we always want the ABL to be doing as little as possible, so that means we can try and improve mechanically on how level this bed is. So off come the leveling wheels again, which allows me to either add or remove washers on each corner to try and compensate for what the ABL probe is telling me. My first adjustment was already a pretty good improvement, but on the second attempt, I managed to get things about as good as I think is possible. All that remains is to run a test print using the exact same G-code as before. I was out of the pink filament, but this is an orange version of the same type. I wouldn't say that the layer stacking problems are cured, but I would say that there seems to be some improvement here. Since I enabled Marlin's input shaping, the bed is moving back and forth more aggressively, so any reduction in wobble I can get should mean a cleaner surface. This is not a magic bullet, but considering how easy it was to do, I'm glad that I did. Before we finish, let's summarize this modification. It is very cheap and easy to do, but remember it's only worthwhile if you have obvious wobble or movement in the way that your bed is currently mounted. Furthermore, unless you have a bed slinger 3D printer, this wobble might not have any consequence, so keep that in mind. On a 3D printer, where the bed only moves up and down, unless the mounts are extremely loose, there shouldn't really be anything that causes wobble. If you don't want to remove your springs entirely, Changing from soft existing springs to ones that are much stiffer can have more or less the same effect. If you are going to attempt this modification, here are my tips. Unless you have a perfectly flat bed surface like glass, you're going to need some sort of compensation system to account for irregularities in the surface. This could be in the form of auto bed leveling or perhaps manual mesh bed leveling, which is supported by most firmwares. Whatever is in place, we still need to get the bed as level and flat as possible, so I'd recommend an assortment of thin washers that you can build up as necessary. Finally, use a washer or spacer that won't cut into the underside of the heated PCB. Nylon or fibrous washers should be ideal, as they'll handle the heat and not cause any damage. Are bed springs obsolete? Well, Bamboo Lab proves that they're not. In some 3D printers, however, you may wish to eliminate them in the pursuit of improved print quality. Let me know whether your 3D printer is still running bed springs down in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.